Former President Trump and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis are holding dueling speeches in Iowa this weekend. Competition between the two men is escalating as the state's GOP caucuses near. The relationship between the two has been a topic of much discussion in the media and political circles. Congressman Ron DeSantis has leaned on Mr. Trump's endorsement and risen in the polls ahead of the August 28th primary election for Republicans. The roots of the rivalry between Trump and DeSantis can be traced back to the 2018 Florida gubernatorial election. I don't know what goes into paying hush money to a porn star. The problem with Ron DeSantis is that he needs a personality transplant. Trump initially endorsed DeSantis in the primary, but his support wavered. Ron DeSantis is an American politician and the 46th governor of Florida. He was born on September 14, 1978, in Jacksonville, Florida. DeSantis graduated from Yale University and Harvard Law School, and he served in the United States Navy from 2004 to 2010. DeSantis began his political career in 2012 when he ran for Florida's 6th congressional district as a Republican. He defeated Democrat Heather Beaven in the general election and was re-elected in 2014 and 2016. During his time in Congress, DeSantis was a member of the House Freedom Caucus and was known for his conservative views. In 2018, DeSantis ran for governor of Florida, and he defeated Democrat Andrew Gillum in a close race. DeSantis campaigned on a platform of lower taxes, increased funding for education, and a commitment to law and order. He also aligned himself closely with then-President Donald Trump and received the endorsement of Trump. As governor, DeSantis has continued to pursue conservative policies. He has signed several bills into law that have been praised by conservatives, including a bill that restricts voting access and a bill that prohibits transgender women from participating in girls' and women's sports. DeSantis has also been a vocal critic of the media and has frequently accused them of being biased against him. About 15 minutes ago, I spoke with Andrew Gillum, and he very graciously conceded the election. Other than serving our nation in uniform, the opportunity to serve as the 46th governor of the great state of Florida is the greatest professional honor of my life. Thank you, the people of Florida, for your faith. And finally, I'd like to thank our president for standing by me when... for standing by me when it wasn't necessarily the smart thing to do. Um, Mr. President, I look forward to working with you to advance Florida's priorities. I think you're going to get tired of me calling you, asking you for things for Florida, uh, but I look forward to that. I think we'll have a great partnership. Donald Trump is a prominent American businessman and politician who served as the 45th President of the United States from January 2017 to January 2021. He was born on June 14, 
1946, in Queens, New York City, and he is a graduate of the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. Trump's political career began in 2015 when he announced his candidacy for president as a Republican. He ran on a platform of Make America Great Again, promising to revitalize the economy, create jobs, and crack down on illegal immigration. Despite initial skepticism from political analysts and pundits, Trump won the Republican nomination and defeated Democrat Hillary Clinton in the 2016 presidential election. As president, Trump pursued a range of policies that were consistent with his campaign promises. He signed a tax reform bill that reduced corporate and individual tax rates, and he implemented a range of deregulatory measures to stimulate economic growth. He also pursued a tough stance on immigration, signing executive orders to increase border security and restrict immigration from certain countries. Trump's presidency was marked by controversy and polarization. He was accused of racism and xenophobia for his immigration policies, and he was criticized for his comments about women and minorities. He also faced criticism for his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic, with many accusing him of downplaying the severity of the virus and not taking enough action to slow its spread. Despite these controversies, Trump remained popular among his base of supporters. He was known for his use of social media, particularly Twitter, to communicate with the public and criticize his opponents. He also made a number of controversial statements that garnered media attention, including his comments about fake news and his claims that the 2020 presidential election was stolen from him. In 2020, Trump sought re-election, but he was defeated by Democrat Joe Biden in a close race. Trump refused to concede the election and made a number of baseless claims about voter fraud. His supporters stormed the Capitol on January 6, 2021, in an attempt to overturn the election results, which resulted in Trump being impeached for incitement of insurrection. I would like to begin by addressing the heinous attack yesterday, and to those who broke the law, you will pay. You do not represent our movement. You do not represent our country. And if you broke the law, you can't say that. I'm not gonna, you, I already said you will pay. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defied the seat of dust. It's defiled, right? See, I can't see it very well. Okay, I'll, I'll do this. I'm going to do this. Let's go. But this election is now over. Congress has certified the results. I don't want to say the election's over. I just want to say Congress has certified the results without saying the election's over, okay? But Congress is certified. Now Congress is Yeah, over. right. Now Congress I didn't is say over. over, so let, let me see. Go, go to the paragraph before. Okay? I would like to begin by addressing the heinous attack yesterday. Yesterday is a hard word for me. Just take it out. The heinous Say attack. Heinous attack or heinous ah, good. Take the word yesterday, because it doesn't work with the heinous attack on our country. Say on our country. Want to say that? No, no, no. My only goal was to ensure the integrity of the vote. My only goal was to ensure the integrity of the vote. is expected to announce a 2024 bid in the coming weeks. In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. Trump has ramped up his attacks on DeSantis, saying, quote, his future doesn't look so good at a town hall earlier this week. Uh, Ron DeSantis, uh, Governor DeSantis, Talking to his uh, donors, he says, quote, you have basically three people at this point that are credible in the whole thing. Biden, Trump, and me. Two have a chance to get elected president. 
Biden and me, based on all the data in the swing states, which is not great for the former president and probably insurmountable because people aren't going to change their view of him. Mr. Trump is charged with 34 counts of falsifying business records in the first degree, a class felony. It is the first time in history a former president faces felony charges. Sadly, the American dream is dead. But if I get elected president, I will bring it back bigger and better and stronger than ever before and we will make america great again thank you thank you very much. once in office desantis was seen as a staunch supporter of trump's policies and agenda he signed legislation banning sanctuary cities which was a major priority for trump and pushed for stricter immigration policies he also supported Trump's efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election, even after the insurrection at the Capitol on January 6. However, tensions between Trump and DeSantis began to rise in 2021, as DeSantis began to assert his own brand of conservatism and style of leadership. DeSantis took a more moderate stance on some issues, such as his support for medical marijuana. He also drew criticism from some conservatives for his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic, which included a controversial decision to keep Florida's beaches open during spring break. At the same time, DeSantis began to build his own national profile, drawing attention from the media and conservative donors. He launched a campaign to combat big tech censorship, signed a bill to restrict voting access in Florida, and emerged as a vocal critic of the Biden administration. This growing prominence and independence from Trump seemed to irk the former president. In a statement released in May 2021, Trump said that he was not a big fan of DeSantis and that he had done nothing to help him win the 2020 election. Ron is a person, I've always had a decent relationship with him, but when I endorsed him, he was, he was gone. He was not going to be able to even be a factor in the race. And as soon as I endorsed him, within moments, he, the race was over. I got him the nomination. He didn't get it, I got it. Because the minute I made that endorsement, he got it. Then he ran, and he wasn't supposed to be able to win. I did two rallies. We had 52,000 people each one, and we ended up, he won. And I thought that he could have been more gracious, but that's up to him. Despite this, DeSantis has continued to build his own political brand and many see him as a potential frontrunner for the 2024 Republican presidential nomination. His popularity in Florida, as well as his strong record on conservative issues, make him a formidable candidate. Last year, we signed a bill uh, to ensure fairness in women's athletics. We thought it was very important that uh, young girls and women athletes in the state of Florida had the ability to work hard, to realize their dreams, and to compete fairly, whether it's in swimming, whether it's in uh, track and field, you name it. And that's something that was really meaningful to a lot of people in Florida, particularly people like me, who are, are parents of, of, of young girls. At the same time, Trump's base of support remains strong, and his endorsement could be a major factor in the outcome of the primary. Trump! We love Trump! We love Trump! We love Trump! Former President Donald Trump is seeking to derail any momentum generated by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis or any potential Republican challengers before the party's 2024 primary even begins. That I'm running for President of the United States of America! The town hall on CNN on Wednesday night was hailed as a huge accomplishment in that sense by the former president's supporters.
Trump has been working hard in recent days to crush any notion that a rival candidate might unseat him or be a strong alternative. The decision to appear on the network was a dig at DeSantis and his tendency to only speak to Fox News or local Florida conservative outlets. Would you be willing to serve as vice president with Donald Trump? I think I'm probably, um, you know, more of, a, uh, of an executive guy. I mean, I think that you want to be able to do things. That's part of the reason I got in. I got into uh, this job is because we we have action. We're able to make things happen, and I think that's probably w what I'm best suited for. Throughout the night, the former president was buoyed by the support of Republican New Hampshire voters. They applauded when he suggested he would pardon a large portion of those convicted of federal offenses for the January 6, 2021 riots. And what they've done, and I, I love that question, because what they've done to so many people is nothing, nothing. And then what they've done to these people, they've persecuted these people. And yeah, my, my answer is, I am most likely, if I get in, I will most likely, I would say it will be a large portion of them. You know, they did a very... And they laughed when he mocked author E. Jean Carroll, which Trump lost a civil court case against her. I don't think so, because I think the whole thing, just so you understand, ready? I never met this woman. I never saw this woman. This woman said, I met her at the front door of Bergdorf Goodwin, which I rarely go into other than for a couple of charities. I met her in the front door. She was about 60 years old, and this is like 22, 23 years ago. I met her in the front door of Bergdorf Goodman. I was immediately attracted to her, and she was immediately attracted to me. And we had this great chemistry. We're walking into a crowded department, so we had this great chemistry. And a few minutes later, we end up in a, a room, a dressing room of Bergdorf Goodman, <laughs> right near the cash register. And then she found out there were locks on the door. So she said, I found one that was open. She found one. She learned this at trial. She found one that was open. What kind of a woman meets somebody and brings them up, and within minutes, you're playing hanky-panky in a dressing room, OK? <laughs> I don't know if you, she was married then or not. John Johnson, I feel sorry for you, John but Johnson. Mr. President, can I, can no, I add think, to this? Think of it. Think of it. Uh, I know you're recounting what she said, but Mr. But, but President. Let, let me just, if I could, because you asked the question. This was a Just jury, so you understand, though. if I was walking in, because I was very famous then, and I owned the Plaza Hotel right next door, and I owned buildings around it, I'm not going into a dressing room. One questioner even criticized DeSantis when he inquired about government mandates for businesses. Trump tonight. Thank you, Mr. Trump. Thank you very much. I'm 26. I'm a veteran. I uh, help manage a private aviation company. Um, you want a job? I'd love one, yeah. I'm looking, yeah. I'm looking for somebody very good. I, uh, I'm not for mandates or government interference in private business, but right. I've seen Republicans going after us like DeSantis after Disney. Right. What would you do as president to protect us from government interference? Well, I'm the one that really wants to protect you. All of these fake investigations of me are about election interference. They think because I'm leading Biden by 11 points, 7 points, 9 points, I'm leading the sanctimonious by a lot by 40 points or 45 points. I think he ought to just relax and take it easy and think about the future because right now his future is not looking so good. I will tell you this, we are really putting it to Biden, but he's putting it to himself because the economy stinks, inflation is horrible, and the border is a disaster. And by the way, the way he got out of Afghanistan was the single most embarrassing moment in the history of our country. Thank you. Trump's campaign interpreted the audience's reaction as a reflection of Trump's connection with Republican primary voters, which any challenger will have to overcome in order to win the party's nomination next year. The town hall also allowed Trump to dominate the news cycle, a familiar tactic of his that will make it difficult for any opponent to gain sustained traction. But if the town hall on Wednesday was a showcase for Trump and his hold on many Republican primary voters, some critics believe it also revealed his vulnerabilities that could cost the party in the general election. Trump constantly asserted that the 2020 election was rigged. He claimed falsely that he had the authority to remove sensitive materials from the White House and display them to others at his Mar-a-Lago residence. He refused to say whether he wanted Ukraine to win its war against Russia, and he defended his comments on Access Hollywood about groping women. 
Sarah Matthews, a former Trump press official who resigned on January 6, 2021 argued, the town hall might have riled up his base, but was unlikely to help Trump with the kind of moderate voters he would need to win back the White House. This just served as a reminder to them of how exhausting and chaotic another four years of Trump would be, Matthews said. Never back down, a super PAC backing a potential DeSantis 2024 bid, provided a long list of topics Trump brought up that they argued highlighted his weakness as a candidate, including his actions on January 6, his insistence that the 2020 election was rigged, his various legal issues, and his previous derogatory remarks about women. Trump's team has been working to cut off any potential momentum around a DeSantis candidacy even before the CNN's town hall. The former president has vigorously attacked DeSantis, who has been reluctant to fight back before announcing his candidacy. And Trump's team rolled out a slew of Republican congressional endorsements, many coming from the Florida delegation, to show the Republican Party support for him. The problem with Ron DeSantis is that he needs a personality transplant, and those are not yet available. Almost all congressmen and women that served with him and knew him well supported me, some of them surprisingly so because of their relationship with Ron. I would say that when it comes to lack of personality, Ron would be in a class with Asa Hutchinson, and that's not good. Ron's foreign trip was a total bomb. They didn't even know what he was doing there. What are you doing here, Ron? Why are you here? It was a mess. Thank you. Many Republican strategists predict DeSantis will see a bump in the polls when he formally announces his presidential candidacy, and they cautioned that debates and ongoing investigations into Trump could shake up the race. What is that word? Uh, you're going, you're going. <laughs> However, there is considerable anxiety among some DeSantis supporters that Trump's lead in the polls has only widened in the previous six weeks and that the Florida governor has drawn more widespread attention. A Washington Post ABC News poll released this week found 53% of registered Republican voters would back Trump in a primary, compared to 25% who said they would support DeSantis. The rivalry between Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis is a reflection of the changing dynamics within the Republican Party. While Trump remains a dominant force within the party, there is growing interest in new leaders who can carry on his legacy while also charting their own course. DeSantis's rise to prominence, and his willingness to assert his own brand of conservatism, is a sign that the Republican Party is still evolving and adapting to changing political realities. Our border is a disaster. Crime infests our cities. The federal government makes it harder for families to make ends meet. And the president flounders. But decline is a choice. Success is attainable. And freedom is worth fighting for. Riding the ship requires restoring sanity to our society, normalcy to our communities, and integrity to our institutions. Truth must be our foundation, and common sense can no longer be an uncommon virtue. In Florida, we prove that it can be done. We chose facts over fear, education over indoctrination, law and order over rioting and disorder. We held the line when freedom hung in the balance. We showed that we can and must revitalize America. We need the courage to lead and the strength to win. I'm Ron DeSantis, and I'm running for president to lead our great American comeback.